Welcome back everyone to Data Science for Everyone. Today we're going to be looking at utilizing multiple um, data sets with Bokeh. Let's get started. So a lot of this came about from a question that I had about how can we potentially uh, grab in and utilize two data sets. Um, and we're going to just make up something that will just um, kind of visualize uh, the, the heads of the data sets. Okay, so we'll allow the user to pick two data sets and import them with an um, import click from their computer or somewhere else. Um, and so let's just go on and get started with that. So first off, let's go on and um, let me go on and create a new file here. Let's save this and this will be something like um, uh, bokeh uh, multiple data sets stop high and so let's go on and get our basic imports in first. So from bokeh.io here, we're going to import uh, Kurdoc, uh, and then we're going to say from bokeh.models.widgets, we're going to import here file input. And this, um, the file input is our kind of our main thing for today. Also is where we can actually import and select a specific file that we want uh, from our computer. Um, and let me also zoom in a little bit for now. Um, and then let's also go on in from bokeh.models. We're going to import in here our uh, our column data source. We want a data table because we want to visualize um, the heads of the data. And then we'll also want to uh, grab a table column. We also want to grab from bokeh.layouts. Let's go on and import in here column and row. Row. And then we also um, we need to do uh, some interesting stuff whenever we import data with, uh, with this file input. OK, so some specialty items that we're going to be needing today uh, is import base64. We also want to import IO. And then we also want to import pandas as PD, okay? Because we're going to be dealing with a little bit of data uh, and whatnot. So first off, um, I want to kind of create up some placeholders for for the um, uh, for our data sets, okay? Because um, this this page is going to open up and it's going to have two um, uh, two places where we can import data. Um, I'm going to start out with one and then we'll double it. Uh, but the first thing that we want to do, though, is have a little bit of a placeholder where it'll kind of show them where the data is going to wind up being. Um, so let's go on and do that. And so we'll do something like PD dot data frame, and we're just going to give it an empty data frame. Uh, and then we'll do something like source here, and this will be something like a column data source of our DF because we're going to want to source our data. Um, and again, um, I'm going to do this for the uh, just for one instance and then we'll double everything later on and so we'll change this to like source one source two and stuff later on but then let's also go on and create up um, a columns columns variable here and we'll make this a list of a uh, table columns uh, and this is a field here we want it to be some column. The title here will be some column. And again, you can specialize these all you want, but if you want it to be relatively generic, okay, for any data that uh, your user may be pulling in, this is the best way to do that. Um, and do for call in um, df dot uh, columns. Okay, and we'll be using that piece of code again here in a little bit. And then we'll also have something like file input in here uh, and this will use our file input there and we want to tell it um, what we want it to accept okay we can tell it to accept basically any type of data set that we want but I'm going to um, narrow this down for the field of a CSV and then I want to give it a specified width because I want this to look relatively clean so we'll say width is equal to 400 for now um, and then we need to uh, do a couple things okay so I'm gonna go on and uh, set this up we're gonna need a callback here uh, but I want to go on and set up everything else first so we can do something like a file input here a dot on change 
Uh, so that's whenever they click and they submit the data, okay, or the file, then it will do whatever we want it to do. So we want it to grab that value, and then we are going to send that to upload uh, data. Um, and I'll actually go on and make this is upload data. I'll pass for now. Um, and then we also are going to want to create up the data table itself. Um, and so I'll do that here. So data table is equal to our data table. And here we want our source to equal source, our columns to equal columns. And our width here is going to be 400 and our height will be 400 as well. Okay, and so we now we basically have set up our documentation. So we'll also do something like curdoc uh, dot add root here, um, and we want let's do a column of our file input, and then our uh, data table here. Okay, so this is this is all of the basics. So what it'll wind up having is a um, a file input source up at the top, and at the bottom it will have just a data table. Okay, and then again, we're going to double this in a second. Now, nothing's going to pop out because we haven't set up our callback. So let's go on and set up our callback, and I'll do something like a print because I, I want something to log in the console to tell me that it's done in case we're doing maybe a big file. Uh, let's say something like data set uh, has been uploaded uh, successfully. Uh, and then we'll do something like a decoded, uh, decoded data. And actually, this this needs to be. We'll have to put that at the bottom if we want everything to run right. Um, and we'll do something like decoded is equal to our base sixty four. Now the reason we're using this base sixty four um, uh, b. Hold on, uh, sixty four decode new. Um, is because when we open up this um, data set, okay, when we when we use this input um, this input file uh, item, it actually grabs the data and has it and holds it in um, uh, uh, in base sixty four, okay. So it's in that in that it's encoded for that. And so to get the data out back out, okay, at least for now, I have a feeling that they'll probably change this later on. Um, but uh, you need to in uh, kind of uh, decode everything from base 64. And again, um, something I forgot here is we need some attribute old new uh, whenever we're setting up our callbacks. So also let's create F here, uh, IO dot bytes IO. And again, this is so that we can um, successfully read in that decoded data. And then here we can do uh, PD is equal to, uh, we want PD, uh, dot read CSV here, um, and we'll have that as F. And then let's also do something like source dot data here because we need to update the data. Uh, DF dot head. Um, so because again, I just want the head of the data. Again, you can you can make this uh, descriptive statistics. You can do all kinds of other fun stuff. You can make a. I would maybe make a second update function in there. And you know what, we, we can do that, but I'm, I'm not going to worry about that right now. Um, and you can, you can do all kinds of little nice math tidbits or anything else you want to do, any uh, data transformation that you want, just put it there, okay? Um, and so then let's go on and update our data table here. Uh, and we need to update the columns, okay? Because this, this is actually um, is going to be a bit of a pain. Um, and that goes for um, these column, uh, these columns here, okay? Um, uh, because again, we want the heads of the columns to change each time, okay? So we're actually kind of technically working and changing this. So let's go on and we want to paste this piece of code here, down here. Okay, uh, and I think that is going to be it for this first version of this code here. So let me clear this and let's do something like um, 
CD bokeh project. Uh, and we want to do uh, bokeh serve show um, here. And we want uh, bokeh multiple dot pi. And I think that'll be it. And it should open up. OK. And so now we have our choose file. And again, here, there's no file selected. And it has some sort of um, item value here. Um, so I already have two um, items in my download folder. So I'm just going to go here. And I just have uh, two CSV files. So first one, I'm just going to grab the MPG data set. And notice, we pull it up. We have our MPG data. It is all selectable. OK, and we can um, do whatever we want with it there. And again, if you have your index here, you can deal with the index. We can also turn off the index if we want. Now, our goal is to basically redo this and have one off to the side, or we can do one off to the bottom here. So let's go and get that done so that we can show the example of having two different data sets. So I'm going to go on and cancel that and clear that. And so the next thing that we are going to want to do here is just basically go on and double everything that we've done so far. Um, again, there are a couple other different ways, but I'm kind of just doing more of a brute force solution today. Um, so uh, source two here is going to be our column data source DF. And then um, I'm just going to leave columns here. It's fine because again, these are just, going, these are just placeholders. Uh, then here will be file one. And then I'm going to go and copy this, paste it here. And let's do, oops, two. Uh, and then here, I'm just going to copy this again here and put something here. This will be, let's say, one. This, is, oh, this will be two. This one's one. Here, we need to change this to one change this to one, uh, change this to one, change this to one. And again, we could have we could have made these uh, functions and everything else. But again, I'm just kind of doing a, uh, a brute force uh, method today just to show that we can uh, do it quickly and easily. And the whole point of this is just again, you can always refactor everything later on. Um, and so let's go on and do one and two here. Uh, and then here, we're going to copy this one more time and put a one and a two uh, and upload one, upload two. Uh, and then we will have a column and a row here. And we're going to say this one's one and one. I'm going to copy this. And we'll change this to two and two. Now, let's just double check everything that everything has doubles. We have a double the source. We have double the input. We have double the callbacks. Uh, one, one, two, two. Uh, inputs again one and two data tables one and two file inputs one data table one uh, file input two data table two so we should be good to go let's go on and rerun this server now oh and it did not like something so let's double check where it failed at for me uh, I probably have a typo somewhere would be my guess uh, failed to validate data tables. Okay, so that's let's go and clear that, and let's go on and double check. Oh, okay. So here's here's where it is. Here, whoops, is right here is the source. Okay, I did not change these sources to source one and source two. Okay, and so that should now now hopefully we should be good to go. Whoops, I want to change that back. There we go. Oh, and there. All right. Whoops. And they are in a bit of a weird order, but these I think these will be OK. So first off, we have our choose file over here. Actually, I don't like the way that this looks. So let's go on and, and fix that, OK? 
So um, here, notice here, we have a file select here and a file select here, and then uh, the data sets are out to the side. I can just show you how this works first. So first now we have our uh, file selection here, and then our uh, data set appears. Now notice here, I can go and I can grab a different data set and select it, and it appears down here. So we have the file name and everything here, and they are selected. Again, I'm not the biggest fan of um, how this looks uh, right now. So let me go on and fix this up because I want the, the choose file to be at the top and I want the data sets to be at the bottom. So close this and we'll go back, go back over here, cancel that, close that. And what happened is this needs to be file input two here and then this needs to be data table one. Okay, so now everything seems to be the way that I was uh, imagining it. We have our choose file selector. And again, I made these 400 by four, these 400. So then everything has the same amount of spacing on it. Um, again, you guys can change it up however you like. Um, and again, so what you may want to do later on, and again, we've done something relatively similar in the past when we did a, um, a data, uh, a, a data visualization for a dashboard or something, but maybe you want to also have these so that you can select, maybe put a selection box here or a, a, a selector toggle or something like that, and where you can select some of these variables, like an X and a Y axis, and then you want to plot them out below. You can, and then maybe another selection axis where you can choose the color or something else. Okay, and then you'd be able to compare two data sets side by side. Um, also, again, if you want to do any sort of, uh, let's say, some sort of math or data translation, you can put that, uh, put data translation or data transformation or manipulation here. Okay. Um, so, again, guys, if you like this, please comment, subscribe, and hit that like button, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.